We're now live. Good evening, everyone. I call the July 22nd, 2024 school board meeting to order. It is 6 p.m. We are in conference room C of the Fisher Administration Building at 12121 West North Avenue. Ms. Summers, please call the roll. Mr. Morris. Present. Dr. Hoyk. Here. Dr. Worley. Here. Ms. Heimer Rolland. Here. Mr. Meyer. Here. Dr. Dessa Finger. Here. And we do have forum this evening. Uh, we begin with an opportunity for public comment. Members of the Wauwatosa School Board value the input of students, parents, staff members, and community members. The board's regularly scheduled meetings provide an opportunity for opinions and concerns to be expressed publicly. The board values all comments and will respectfully consider this, this input in decision making. The board requests that individuals limit their comment on each item to three minutes. Following any comment, an individual board member may respond on the issue raised. However, it is not the intent of public comment portion of the agenda for the board to enter into debate with a member or members of the community. Because non-agenda items are not publicly posted in advance, no action will be taken on public comment regarding non-agenda items this evening. Uh, Jamie, is there anyone online who would like to have, take, uh, give public comment? Yeah, we do have one attendee. Deb Falk Palak, you have the microphone. Thank you. I'd like to make comments regarding the language for the facilities referendum. I really feel that in order for us to ensure that money is spent on what we're saying with ADA issues, that we need to reference what those projects will be. Um, for example, the uh, thank you, Mr. Morris, for finding that document, and then Dr. Means for confirming the one that he had found that shows with the 2018 referendum what the community was told would be on the ballot for ADA issues. But when you cross reference that with the 2022 report that was handed out by the board at one of the listening sessions earlier this or in fall, along with the May 2023 ADA facility assessment, you will see items that the community was told would be done in 2018 show up as ADA issues on these reports. So that's a bit concerning that we're at being asked to pay for these again when we were told that some of these items would be addressed. So to avoid that and to avoid turnover in board, turnover in administration, and people um, really being able to track these projects and ensure that what we're saying in this language is truly going to happen, I'd really like to see us reference whatever that is. Because right now, it's it's difficult to feel confident that the board or the the district um, will be using the money as intended or as the language says. So I'm suggesting that if you really, really, really feel that you're going to be using this money for ADA projects, it's it's clear and communicated clearly to the community what those projects are. And perhaps it's as simple as inserting the language as referenced in the 2023 ADA facility assessment or whatever language to ensure that we know this money is going to be used for what is stated in the question. And we don't end up with seeing things appearing in the um, ADA report that we were told would be done in 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, any additional public comment this evening? There are no more hands raised. With that, I will close public comment for this evening. Uh, we then move into the consent agenda. Are there any items in the consent agenda which board members would like to remove for separate discussion and action? Mr. Meyer. Separate discussion and action on the referendum items, please. Anything else? Just a clarification. Can you give me a quick overview on the contract we have for the GoGuardian renewal? The GoGuardian contract. 
I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, just if there's any clarification just for, for my knowledge here of anything, any changes substantive between where we had before this year and this one? Thank you, Dr. Rock. It is recommended that the school board approve the consent agenda and I so move. Okay. May I have a second? Second. And again, this is uh, the consent agenda with. Without? I'm actually going to ask Jenny. Do you want me to read it? We have a motion and a second. I'm going to ask, would we like to have a friendly amendment? It's the, Mr. Myers requested. I agree to a friendly amendment. Okay. So we don't have to withdraw the second and throw the motion. So Mr. Myers requested uh, the item for the referendum to be removed for separate discussion action. So this is voting on all items in the consent agenda, except for the referendum. Yes. yes. Any more discussion on the consent agenda minus the referendum questions. Ms. Summers, please call the roll. Mr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Hoyk? Yes. Dr. Worley? Yes. Ms. Hammer Rowland? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. And this agenda item passes. Um, Mr. Meyer, the floor is yours. Thank you. I had every intention of just voting yes on the consent agenda. Um, now, because public comment is meaningful and we do listen, I think the comment made was fair that, um, uh, that how do we know that the money is actually going to be spent? And typically we would say, well, of course it's going to be spent on what we say it's going to be spent on, but we can't argue with facts of our performance on 2018 referendum analysis facilitated by one of our own board members here. So what do we do about this? I mean, if, 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 if we had no history of not getting it done the way we wanted to get it done, it'd be a different conversation tonight, but now we do have a history of not getting it done the way we said we were going to do it. And I was a part of that too. So I'm not casting stones on other people. What do we, how can we, and do we need to pass this tonight? Do we maybe bring it forth with, um, at the next meeting with um, a specific resolution that, that the board calls the roll on the, on the ADA items that are to be included in the, um, you know, in the referendum? Do we pass this tonight and somehow commit that we will, in, in maybe the next board meeting, have a resolution that we call the roll on, as we did with other things we said we were, we knew there are certain um, policy decisions, directional decisions, um, details decisions that the board has to make before the vote in November in order to communicate to the community specifically what the money is for. Maybe we decide we we're fine passing this tonight and we make a moral commitment this evening to bringing such resolutions to the action items to the board prior to the November vote and as soon as possible maybe to detail what we're going what we're committing as a board to doing. Right, so we don't slow anything up tonight. And we did say in an earlier meeting that we were gonna have action items by the board to decide on specifics before the vote in November. So everybody can be happy and assured, you know. May I, Dr. Joseph, may I? Mr. Meyer, thank you for your, your timely comments. And I wanna thank the community for utilizing the community comment section to give the governance team time to pause. What I would tell you is that the resolutions in front of you that you affirmed in June and you're going to reaffirm here this evening, our attorneys will tell you that they are more specific than you will find with most resolutions when you look at resolutions for a referendum. We are already very clear about the work. I think it is fair during, during my travels, um, 
in preparing and, and doing and working with the community around the Tulsa 2075 task force and other uh, opportunities, there seems to be a lingering um, sense of regret around the 2018 referendum. I believe that that stems from how we set things up at the governance level. So what I mean by that is administratively, and, and to the community member's point, it doesn't matter if this team is here or not. We need to create a structure where when we say we're going to do certain projects, we complete the projects. And so if the referendum is successful in November, then what will happen is Mr. Le, uh, LaFountain, uh, Mr. Ek, uh, Ecker and I will bring you a list of projects that we will say, this is what we're going to do. You will have that list. The community will have the list. And then that's how you hold us responsible. From a governance standpoint, the way that it should work is once we give the board that list, then you hold us responsible administratively to do the work we say we're going to do. That's typically how it works. Um, and so what I would suggest is to move forward, um, we will, what we can do is once the, ref, if the referendum is successful in November, in December or January, we will bring to you the projects that we believe need to be accomplished. That will be a, I believe an accountability document that then the community and the board can hold administration responsible for. And I think it should be a hierarchy of responsibility. That document should be something that the board holds administration uh, accountable for, and then the community can have the same document before the project start to hold both the board and administration responsible. That's typically how we function. Mr. Mark? Why wouldn't we pass those detailed commitments prior to November so that people know what they're voting to pay for. I I mean, I I want to get this done tonight. I, I really want to vote yes. Okay. And I was here in 2018 and I don't I, love I don't like how it ended up. It was in part on my watch as one of seven board members. Right. It didn't work out the way, not that it was bad, but it wasn't what every obviously from the facts here, it wasn't what was promised and how do we, can we give the community something to assure them before they say yes or no, that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. And now I know some people don't like the trust, but verify well, but it exists. And I think it exists for the board too. So the well, trust, you know, trust the board, sure. trust us. Well, the board could come along and, you know, do something different than not, 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 not like what's the, there's a word for it in the law. Um, not materially different. Sure. But different enough that people would feel let down. You know, maybe it's legal compliance. And so I'm trying to vote yes tonight. And I'm, I'm needing to hear that we're going to tell the community before they cast their vote in November, specifically what we plan to do with the money insofar as we're able detail it. I mean, I don't want to make promises where we just kind of throw something out there. We're not really sure. It just, just by the same token. We're right? unable to do that tonight, Mr. Meyer, or prior to a construction manager working with us to identify the specific projects okay. that we will do to accomplish the ADA work. So it would be premature from a construction standpoint to identify the actual projects. That's why Again, in most re resolutions for a referendum, it is very broad. Our resolution for the facility, the $60 million facilities referendum, is, is very specific to say, here are the three bu major buckets that we're going to spend the money on. High school ADA, elementary ADA, and elementary deferred maintenance. That is very, that's very narrow. And then the actual projects themselves will be within those three areas. You mentioned the trust but verify statement. Um, and for us, the board, the right. seven board members, yep. not for you, but for us. Right. And, and to that, you and I have had that conversation of it, it is, and I think it's, it, we ha I have to say this publicly, the trust but verify piece 
for our administration when you consider the 2018 referendum does not, I would just hope that the community would know that none of us were here in 2018. But we're committed to being more transparent and have been more transparent. But we're not, and candidly, we're not asking the community to trust us. We're, we're, what we're sharing with you is if the referendum passes in November, we will work with a construction manager and bring to the board within 90 days after the passage of the referendum, the specific projects that the construction manager will say, here's what we're going to do. Here's what needs to happen within the three major areas of elementary ADA, high school ADA, and elementary school deferred maintenance. Okay, so I'm trying to, trying to think through this. So as we, so let's say we pass the referendum and now we have specific spending plans and as I'm recalling from the past six years, that administration comes to the board with a spending proposal. Yes. That's specific. Yes. And we have to call the roll on yes. that spending proposal. Absolutely. That is where the vote of the board comes in at that time. So you and the board has to, there has to be, and I don't know what the legal term will be, I'll just say material compliance with the with the promise of the referendum that we have to spend the money on what the referendum approved it for. And on a case by case basis, we authorize release of funds. And that specific authorization on that line item has to be within the governance boundaries of the referendum that provided the funding. So yeah, that yes. will be okay. Yes. All right. And, and that becomes the, the accountability documents yes. for the board, for the community, for your administration. Yes, because even like, you know, to, and when I say trust but verify here, I mean that the board does what it said it was going to do. Correct. Now with an opening on the board, we will have a quorum of the board up for election next spring and a quorum of the board up for election in the spring of 2026. It could be a different board. And we need to know that they're bound by the same restraints or rules as this these seven would be if we were all still on the board in two years. So I think it sounds okay for me that I can vote yes tonight. And I, no, it's a good, you know, it's a good conversation. I think it's good to have it publicly. So the community knows that before any decisions are made about the money, okay. if the community says yes to us, that there will be an opportunity for this governance board to review what the projects will be. And then there will be a document, not the type of document that the community member had to ask mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. from, from Mr. Morris, but there will be a document that says, here are the projects that we're going to accomplish. And, and then you, okay. and, and, okay. and you hold us responsible for okay. it. Okay, and as I recall from the 2018 referendum, we have to spend the money on authorized purposes. And if we don't spend all of the money, it somehow reverts back to the community and tax relief, yeah. as I'm understanding. So thank you for your patience with me so we could talk through this, so we could have transparency with the community about how this all works. Because like I said, walking here tonight, I think yes on the consent agenda and let's move on to the next item. But this very sincere question came up that was based in a factual problem that history shows we did. And so how are we gonna behave differently going forward? Okay, thanks. Dr. Mark. I, it, I think maybe maybe I'm missing a detail here or some of the, the specifics. So I'm looking at the document that Mr. Morris showed us originally, the one that Ms. Falk-Palak has referred to. And I'm wondering, as I look at this, like what, you're saying that we didn't do something we said we were going to do. I didn't say that. The, the, I think there's whatever, a, the comments said that. I think there's a belief in the community, Dr. Hoyt, that there were projects that were promised or discussed prior to the 2018 referendum that don't appear on that document oh. that, that were supposed to happen. So items that appear, the items that appeared on the discussion of the 2018 referendum are oh. reappearing. Yeah. on this referendum. Therefore, we must not have actually done them. Where where do we know where these conversations happened? Because I'm looking at the document that, that, that is Mr. Pretty transparent. Yeah. And it's pretty and it's pretty vague as well, to be honest. And so I'm I guess I just wanna I wanna be really thoughtful about accepting comments that suggest that 
things were promised that didn't happen. Cause I don't know if that is or isn't true. Cause I don't see any, I wasn't here on the board at that time and I don't see anything that would suggest promises were made and then money was spent in places it shouldn't have been spent. The feedback I've received is that people assumed, citizens assumed that there would be more ADA accessibility work accomplished with that 2018 referendum dollars that were that actually was not accomplished. And so I think from what I'm hearing from certain uh, segments of the population, people are surprised that we did so little in the area of ADA accessibility with 2018 funds. Well, even if it, even we might not be That's saying- That's a misunderstanding. We might not be saying it was spent in the wrong place if we sort of underestimated what it would cost for the mm -hmm. various line items, and we we just ran out. Yeah, everything yeah, went to the right place, but it just it came up short or whatever right. in, in some capacity. So I don't think there's a problem or a scandal or anything. I mean, there's a lot of money and a lot of things, and it's nothing going to work out exactly right. Mm -hmm. But now we're going at it again to do it this kind of thing again. And somebody said, well, based on a list that you provided, that. There was a thing on the list last time, it's still on the list this time. Yeah. Explain it, that, it, that's all I'm just saying. It makes sense, because I know I was I came onto the board maybe a, two weeks before the board took the vote to move forward with the referendum. Or maybe, it, it was or not when the referendum, but when the, com, the facilities committee, basically in one of my first meetings, came and shared everything. Mm -hmm. And the facilities committee did a very thorough job of laying out $350 million of problems in the district problems, opportunities, things that might go sideways if not attended to. And so if, if a community member was listening to all the things that we would have done or fixed or addressed with $300 million, they certainly would have been surprised that we did not address all those. If they weren't paying attention as closely from that point to the point where we decided, oh, we actually have about 124.9. And then the board with the administration at the time walk through how do we maximize these resources to solve as many problems as we can that are as urgent as we can and there was way more than 125 million dollars of urgent problems ada and many others um that wanted to be addressed and and i i think folks who were frustrated that we were not able to fix everything even though we they gave us 125 million dollars understandably should be frustrated and I also understand the reality of we had $350 million of problems and $125 million of solutions. And it's important to know of the, 100, the $124.9 million, approximately 74% of it was being spent on four schools. Mm -hmm. So whatever was remaining went, had to be spread across all the other schools. So even if there was a commitment to doing ADA work, I don't know if it was, and again, I don't want to uh, judge people or be critical of what happened in 2018, but I think the, the conversation of realize that only 26% of that referendum dollars have to now be spread across all the remaining schools, that doesn't leave you with a lot of money. Now, very savvy community members even yesterday when I, I had a chance to speak to some community members, they do realize that um, maybe building four schools were too many schools and maybe it should have, you should have, we should have used 50% of the $124.9 million to then address some of the deferred maintenance and ADA accessibility work. I think that's, as I've gone around and talked to in the community, that's been the criticism. That's why the language, language that we do have in these two resolutions are so specific. Actually, we've been, we're more specific this time with these resolutions than we were in 2018. So from this point, if we have, and we have approved everything already on all these resolutions. So the change, the only change that's on them is where we would be advertising. Um, putting a notice. Putting a notice. Um, that if the re if the operations referendum, if the facilities referendum is approved, that would then 
move the district to both well, now we've got a facilities plan of like here's a lot of problems and things that we we, we that see need to be addressed and that's all out in the public and available for review yeah. but we would work then with construction managers and others to kind of go through and determine how would we go about solving all these things and so that would come back to the board in a report and a recommendation with a here's how we would spend these resources to solve the problems that we've identified that would also come back to the board on different future occasions um presumably to talk about um then the last time we did this there would be bids that go out that would go out to the to the public on a variety of different components on this and would flow back and the board would get on kind of ongoing reports on this both in writing and during board meetings as well so i think there's multiple opportunities um for review and oversight uh at multiple levels Jermire. i think the public comment here was good and constructive that you know for the size of the referendum in 2018 it was remarkably successful for what we intended to do as with all big endeavors you do a lessons learned afterwards and lesson learned was this one item uh, at least this one item didn't turn out as well as what i would have liked that's not to say the referendum wasn't a success but i just think this kind of dialogue is very healthy and good when we talk about it to raise the consciousness on this thing that wasn't quite as right as we wanted it to last time and maybe we a little extra oomph into it this time and get it righter than it might have been had we not had this discussion tonight and that's just how i look at it it's like it's part of excellence and culture and operations that we always do this kind of stuff self scout self critique and try to be better than what we would have been if we had talked about it sure thanks um dr hoyk can you call us um uh it, it would be the motion for the item that was from previously removed It is recommended that the school board approve and reaffirm the board's June 17th final actions authorizing a referendum on issuing general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $60 million. Is that what you need? No. I'm sorry, what do you need to do? <laughs> Move to approve the items removed. Good enough for me. Okay. It is recommended that the school board approve the referendum language and ISO move. Second. <laughs> um, any board discussion on this item? Seeing none, please call the roll. Mr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Hoy? Yes. Dr. Worley? Yes. Could I just insert that two of us online had our hands up, but we weren't called on? It's okay, Mr. President. You can move on, but maybe in future discussions we can be noticed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if those, I don't have a computer in front of me this evening, so if anybody sees hands, I apologize. Oh, sorry. We call, we, I think we're still mid-roll. We're still calling them. Would you like me to continue? Yes, please. Ms. Hammer Rowland? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessa Banger? Yes. And that item passes. Um, I believe we are at, this is four? Yes. Uh, strategic goal for high quality staff action to approve CVS as Wauwatosa School District's pharmacy benefit manager provider for employee benefit services effective 10 1 24. Uh, Liz, can you read this one? Sorry, yeah, I can. Sorry, I can't find it. It is recommended that the school board approve CBS as Wauwatosa School District's pharmacy benefit manager provider for employee benefit services 
effective October 1, 2024, and I so move. Thank you, may I have a second? Second. Um, for that moment. Good evening. Uh, we discussed at the um, July 8th uh, Board of Education meeting um, some of the changes that we're anticipating with our health insurance and costs for the upcoming plan year. Um, the recommendation this evening continues from the last. One of the changes that we're able to make without disruption to employees would be to adjust our pharmacy benefits manager. That's the behind the scenes coordinator of pharmacy and otherwise known as prescription benefits for employees on our health plan. Um, to go ahead and just remind you briefly, uh, we're anticipating a $4.2 million deficit in terms of our uh, employee health insurance benefit. Our other plans for life insurance, dental, vision, short and long-term disability are all running well, and we do not anticipate any changes in those areas. But we do need to address health insurance based on the deficit from last year's plan um, and then the increases we saw to this year's plan. Um, we are bringing a multi-pronged approach to doing that. Um, the pharmacy benefit manager, because it takes so much time to change the behind the scenes setup of our plan, we expedited um, this request for your approval um, to have that done in July. Um, the one year savings uh, for this change uh, from Optum RX to National Cooperative CVS um, is anticipated to not have any medication disruption for employees and the savings in this first year are estimated at just over $400,000. Those savings increase over time. Um, this is a chart of the, um, the different bids that we received. Um, I did ask the question related to, um, I believe there was a, um, a pharmacy, Amazon, um, can you remind me what it was? It was uh, Amazon, it was kind of their pharmacy benefit manager program. Yep, so uh, what we what we learned is that they are not technically a pharmacy benefit manager, they're more of another mail order pharmacy. Um, and so someone could refill their prescriptions on the Amazon pharmacy, but they don't provide that behind the scenes coordination that we would be looking for. Um, so you see from um, uh, the top bids, we are not going with the very top bid because that would have um, provided a great deal of disruption for prescriptions for our staff members. And we're looking at um, a three year savings um, of just over 27% or almost $3.5 million. The estimated savings for this first year is prorated uh, based on the listed first year savings of almost a million dollars, because our plan year goes October 1st to September 30th, we'll only be realizing about 75% of those savings in the first year. Um, we will bringing, uh, be bringing forward then recommendations for health plan options to go ahead and account for as much of the deficit as we can. Um, I have held four of five meetings uh, with employees as of this evening. Um, to talk about um, the benefits plan changes um, and to answer questions and provide information. We also met recently with um, just last week with our health and wellness committee um, and we uh, expect to rather than just bringing one plan option forward for you in the month of August, uh, we anticipate bringing um, two plan proposals forward with you that employees would have the option to choose between one of those two plans. And this is a highlight of the things that are currently happening um, for these changes. Um, moving towards that, again, that August recommendation for looking at the rest of the options to address our deficit. And I would entertain questions as you have them. I have one question. So I was asking, if you go back to the, the chart there with the savings with the options, mm -hmm. that option C there, is, is that the... I guess the current option that is the most beneficial. Um, so what you see on this particular table is that um, the second column from the left, um, our current plan, 
we're required to make um, just a very minimal change in our deductible. And so that, that current plan represents what we would have to provide in the future, along with the pharmacy benefits manager change and the reduced number of employees. So that's most comparable. You, again, you see a little bit of savings, but nothing, nothing near what we're looking for. Um, option A is what we talked about the legislative or the finance and resource committee about at their last meeting in terms of recommendation, which would be a 15% employee premium contribution. What um, we talked with our health and wellness committee about, and we've um, and I added to our presentation for staff information today is that we're also considering, in addition to option A, offering option C, which would be a 10% employee contribution, almost um, a double deductible, $3,000, $6,000. But then if you look at the second line from the bottom, in order to make that plan more competitive, um, that plan would come with some additional health savings accounts contributions by the district um, to help reduce that overall um, considerable HSA or out-of-pocket deductible cost. So, so potentially um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be finalizing a recommendation or going forward, employees can choose between options A and option C. When we were um, talking about salary for our staff and educators in the past, were we, and we were comparing ourselves to other districts, were we considering benefits in how we looked at our overall kind of salary? I'm just, I'm just, I'm thinking about our educators who, you know, we just recently gave them these, these fairly good sized salary increases. There seemed to be a lot of joy around that happening. And now I'm wondering how much of this we're basically just taking sort of back. And again, recognize the challenge we're facing. Um, and it's amazing that there's been a zero contribute, you know, zero dollar contribution for all of these years. Um, I don't know anybody else that's got that anymore for a long time. Um, so I, I recognize that, but I, I also just want to be thoughtful about, you know, we've kind of, are we talking out of both sides of our mouth when we're saying we've given you these raises, but then we're taking back a lot of it for benefits. Yep. Um, so one of the pieces of information we'll bring forward to you along with the recommendations in August is a comparison of Wauwatosa teacher salaries in 2021 versus a comparison of Wauwatosa teacher salaries in 2024, comparing us to um, several of the school districts that we've looked at um, over time mm -hmm. um, and, and looking at sig significantly how we are much more competitive from a salary standpoint. Um, and so we'll be able to demonstrate that for you based on the same charts that I'm using with our staff. Um, and so we have looked in the past at both total compensation as well as salary. The 21% increase that teachers have received since 2022 has brought us to be comparable and competitive from a salary standpoint. From a benefit standpoint right now, um, the word that I've been using is that we are really incomparable. There is no other employer and no other school district that offers a 0% premium contribution. And by maintaining such, our premium has increased enough so that we're kind of pricing ourselves out of, in, out of being competitive going forward. Um, so we'll also be able to share with you um, what these plan design changes um, make us look like from a competitive standpoint in other school districts, um, separate from the insurance as well as with the insurance. So we remain uh, we remain uh, very competitive now uh, from a salary standpoint. That's um, that's new for us, um, and we'll be going from uh, with these changes an incomparable benefit from an insurance standpoint um, to a very competitive benefit from an insurance standpoint. Is it fair to say, Ms. Olazowski, that if you look at the two components of what makes total compensation? that from a benefit standpoint, we were in a very elite category, if not in a category by ourselves. I think the latter is more true. We were in a category by ourselves. Okay. And that, and from a salary standpoint, we were in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so now we've, we've, we've risen up a little bit on the salary side and the, the, the benefit side has been in a position where it's elite in a category on its own. And so now... It's not that we're lowering the overall compensation. It's just that we're actually bringing it more into alignment with an overall compensation package. 
Yes, I would say that um, with the proposed changes with the health insurance benefit, we would be very competitive now from both a, a salary as well as a benefits um, comparison. Very good. Thank you. And we'll be able to, we graphed that for you. I mean, what we'll be able to share with you next month. That'd be great. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. To address Dr. Hoig's question, some. Um, I will cast my vote tonight with a clear conscience that going back even now almost three years ago before Dr. Hoyt was on the board, when we were talking about salary increases, I very clearly said that this will mean benefits changes unless there's additional funding received somehow, some way by the school district and the Wauwatosa Education Association and the State Education Association advocated for passage of our salary package. And I've said, I believe multiple times through the years, through in these past almost three years, that I would support what we did because while well, I'm in my 60s, I am not in middle age working, I am not at the start of my career. I do not firsthand know what it's like to have healthcare needs as a middle aged person, a younger person starting their career, or nor do I understand what it's like to have children at that age in today's world. And my values of favoring the higher benefits and the lower salaries objectively it wasn't necessarily the best thing to do but it was what my value structure would have wanted for me and if the teachers didn't like what the path we were going down more of them should have said something at the time and because not many said anything to object i think it's fair to conclude that there weren't objections by the vast majority of teachers for the path we were going down, which is a fair path, looking at total compensation, uh, what's the, what percentage of the pie is salaries, what percentage of the pie is benefits, what's appropriate for people of this generation. And the vast majority of comment from all directions said that this is the direction we want to go in and the, this plan tonight is one more step in furtherance of that longstanding choice of direction or over the course of the past two years. So if somebody doesn't like it, they were warned, not that there was anything to warn them about because it's still a good compensation package. It's different, but it's still good. So thanks. Is there anybody online? Are there any hands up? Any board members? I, I don't, I don't see anything. But I, I guess we should offer and welcome Ms. Heimer Rollin or Dr. Worley to weigh in if they they see a need. I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this evening we're taking action on this item. Um, any. Final board comment or question before we call the board. Ms. Summers, please call the roll. Mr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Hoyt? Yes. Dr. Worley? Yes. Ms. Hammer Rowland? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. And that item passes. Thank you all very much. Um, we move to five board governance procedures for filling school board vacancy. Um, and we'll be taking action on this item this evening as well. So um, I will walk through the procedures and then we'll have an opportunity for a conversation and discussion, and then we'll uh, put a motion on the floor to adopt or amend the procedures. Um, what I worked with uh, legal counsel on um, is to pull up what we have utilized for the, so basically the foundational document for the two previous uh, board vacancies. 
um, that, that have occurred. Uh, what has been updated in this document is seat numbers, uh, individuals uh, who uh, kind of where things are directed to to make sure that we're following uh, state statute. Uh, Mr. Waterman reviewed everything um, and said we look like we're in, we're in pretty good shape. Um, there are dates uh, that are located in terms of that are approximate to what we've given time for folks in the past to submit materials. Uh, and the same materials are asked for here as has been previously the case. Uh, things get submitted to the district officially, I think in our policy that's to the board president, but I will be working with uh, in Summers to kind of collect everything. They'll all be uh, collected uh, centrally via an email address uh, that they'll be received. Uh, and then they will be sent out uh, to all the board members uh, at the point when we've closed the the, the time the, the window of time. Uh, at that point, the board would have an opportunity to come together um, in open session. Uh, everybody who submitted materials would have an opportunity to come uh, speak before the board. And there are a series of questions uh, that they don't have an opportunity to speak to. We can talk about what those questions are. If folks want to tweak them and adjust them, uh, we can do that this evening. Uh, they'd have a kind of a short window of time to speak. And then there's a vote by the full board uh, in session. And so this is unlike when we vote uh, for officers, this is not a um, this is not an anonymous vote. So the board does take a vote on in public in public on the site of public. Um, and so the process I present to you that's available on board docs uh, is in essence what we have done in the past with adjustments to make sure that the timeline's updated uh, for current or day and the email address has been updated and so on. So I'd open the floor for conversations and discussions. And the last thing I would say is Mr. Waterman has articulated there's not a lot in statute that gives us specifics of, of how to go about doing this. So this is about what we've done in the past, but if people want to make adjustments or changes, now's the, the time to, to discuss that. Mr. Martin. My input, and actually a kind of a concern on the questions and answers, it, you know, I'm, I'm of a certain religious faith and my religious faith was defined by for us by how we were different from one other particular religious faith and everybody else in the world from all the other religious faiths except those two say well mike you and your faith and that second faith they're, they're pretty much the same so and i'm like well no they're not because but but with with that kind of like parable about this it looks like from these questions, we're looking for, we might only get people who are the same as what we already are. Well, what do I mean? Well, do we want to encourage an architect or a structural engineer or a, tr a true professional financial analyst, not just somebody who I've had a couple finance classes or I, I'm on a financial, you know, a board or something. So it seems like we're not actively soliciting a lot of diversity of intellectual pursuits with these questions, you know, or for example, you know, a true scientist, um, as in a, a phys in the, in the physical science world you know, somebody with a PhD in physics. Or, and, and why do I say that? Well, there's, to me, value in diversity on a governance board that we touch more bases about the substance of what we do as an educational institution. And, and then also with respect to the endeavors that the board is teed up to, to oversee in the next few years, you know, significant building projects. Is there someone here who is um, capable to add to the board conversation with what we're asking for? We had a fellow on the board um, a few years ago, Tom Jarose, and he was a, um, a significant project manager in the trades. And he was a big help when we 
had bids on construction items, for example. And I miss not having that to assist me when I'm looking at assessment of things. So I just ask that, is there something we would want to add to welcome applicants who are less exactly like us than, than what we're looking for here? I, I think I would add to that, Mr. Meyer. I think the conundrum there is the conversations and the work that we do, especially on this board right here, I can't say that any one of us can say that they know what all of us does. Right. And so these right. some of the things you point out there. Right. I've not said it out loud, but I said, but I've got three of those things that we don't talk about and those things that we don't have enough in service and those things, right. so having those dimensions of, do we have science? Do we have building envelope specialists? Do we have risk engineers? Do we have managers in finance? Do we have people with economics and finance backgrounds? We do, but we're not having those conversations. So we're making assumptions that we don't have that knowledge currently on the board. Yeah. And I, I think to your point there, adding that diversity, I think, I think people see in our community and that those and it'd be great i'd love to have a phd and some other things and yeah. but i think we're also limited to those the the pool of candidates that are going to step forward right. Right. that can commit that time and do these things the same way we are and right. having right. i'd love to see that right. you know we have very good diversity and generational okay. knowledge here and all those other things i think mm -hmm. you kind of take it sometimes as i don't think it's limiting but i think it's just it is really yeah. what it is. It's yeah. limiting by nature. Yeah. All I'm the things go, are true all at once. I'm going to go to throwing it out there. Yeah. I'm going to go to Liz, who has her hand up, and then uh, Dr. Worley. Dr. Worley will be next. This time around. Yeah. Um. So I guess I would push back a little bit on that because the first question is share the knowledge, skills, and experience you have and how you will utilize them to successfully serve the community and the Board of Education. I think the first question that these candidates or whatever we want to call them, that gives them the opportunity to say, hey, I have a background in architecture. I have a background in X, Y, Z. And that is why I would be helpful. I guess it would be more helpful for me um, if Ms. Nermeyer would um, state explicitly which questions he thinks should be removed or a specific question that um, you think should be added that's not there. I'm going to go back to Mr. Meyer since there's a question kind of asked of him to, to follow up on that, and then we'll go to Dr. Worley. You're coming to me first? I'm sorry. Yeah. I was, okay. Um, well, I would maybe add a clause to um, item one to say we encourage applicants from all um, professions and trades to consider what contribution you could make. Something that that general... I mean, I kind of like to see the applicants and hope to see something I didn't think of and listen to them explain how they can help. And I'm educated in the process about, oh, that we don't have that outlook here. Um, you know, we'll get, you know, by, by the extreme comparison the other way, I, I don't think we need a superintendent. We don't need a superintendent and seven board members who are qualified to be a superintendent. Like, like we don't have that, but because of the licensure stuff, but that's, that would be the way other extreme. It's like it's the idea that we have to have so much of us of an educational specialty that we lose, um, you know, different outlooks on the world, which can help us plan our career preparation endeavors for the kids, like the project, the way things, things like that. So yeah, if, if we could just add a clause in item one to say all so all, that all, we encourage all we encourage applicants from all backgrounds, careers, and trades to apply, and and explain how you think you can help us and, or something like that. And, and then it would be please share the knowledge, skills, and experience you have. So that would the line I wrote would just go and right in front of underneath subpoint I one. Sure. Yeah. Right. Right with that. I don't think we need an, an additional point. I just. Okay. But they encourage all trades and professions to apply uh, under this item. Okay, professions instead of careers. Got yeah, it. or career. Yeah, right. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Dr. Worley. So my first point was kind of similar to Miss um, Hanma Rollins, and I'm not sure that now I'm not sure that that addition actually belongs in this um, question 
that we're looking for. I think that belongs in making sure it's really clear when we put this out um, because mm -hmm. I think it kind of is then becomes like a tag on, whereas I would rather see that call for, you know, all different backgrounds to, um, you know, to be very part, like the very first part of the presentation, not what they have to answer. But in this question, one could add um, something along the lines and, and Mr. Meyer, I don't know if this gets at what you're asking, um, please, something like, please help us understand how this expands um, the knowledge and skill sets of the board. Um, that would get a little bit in the actual, when they're actually answering questions, that would give us a little more help. Because someone could say, you know, like I'm, um, you know, I'm an electrician and maybe they have a particular way, it would help me to hear what that would then be most helpful with. Um, in the question, I'm just looking at the specific role of what we're doing here, questions and answers that we want them to speak to when they come to see us. So I'm all for making sure our call is very broad and, and inviting and, you know, puts out some of those. Because I do think sometimes people think, well, Board of Education, you have to know something about education to do that, right? Um, but we definitely need um, a variety of different perspectives. So that was point number one for me. If you'd like to you know, figure back into that, I can hold off on point number two, which is about a different question on the list, number six. Put it into the call for applicants and not tinker with the questions and answers. Um, you know, for example, Dr. Worley, you're an expert in conflict resolution. You know, that's good to have here. You know, maybe somebody else will, you know, just, but I like it, as you're saying, it, put it in the call for applicants and not in the questions. They're more you likely know. to see it even before they apply, right? So and this is a big tent. Yes. 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 I think that's yeah. There you go. I like that. Okay. So then, thank you. Um, number six. I think that you know, uh, the one place I I would like that question in asking. Please share your degree of an alignment. You're not going to. I'm not necessarily sure we're going to get. A, a quantif an answer. Someone could say, well, 3%. Well, then what does that mean? So I'd like to see some wording there that, and maybe others can think of others, which is please um, talk about what in this district strategic plan and Boards North Star is important to you or aligns well. So they could talk about what aligns well. Um, and I think that would give a sense of the alignment. I'm not as sure. I mean, I like the diversity on the board. If somebody's going to come in and kind of um, say, well, I think, you know, our, our North Star is great, but it could add this, right? I don't want to scare that away. I don't want people to feel like, you know, in looking at these questions that we're going to be assessing. Um, and maybe this isn't, wasn't the intent, but it can be read as well. Are they assessing how much of an alignment I'm in? I'd rather just hear them speak to, you know, where do they see themselves in alignments and maybe even give them the question of this. If you could make a change or if you could make a contribution, you know, what's most on your mind at this point? Dr. Worley, yeah. there's a lot there and it's good. Uh, and I, I know we're, we're doing some wordsmithing and that's great. Can you actually put together what you'd like to see and we'll come back to you for that, for like the, I don't know if it's the first half of that or the whole thing, but come come up with language and then be ready to read it back to the board. Back on mute, so I'm thinking. Okay. That's a yes. Dr. Worley, did yes, you hear I that? put my thumb. Sorry, yes, that was a yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I assume you want this fairly quickly, so I'm going to do that right now. Thank you. Other board comments or questions on? We can stay on the questions. Uh, we can. What, what I've heard so far to to summarize, we're going to not add to the first question the that we encourage applicants full backgrounds, but that will be highlighted in the email, the call. The call that yeah. goes. I that think goes, that's a way uh, better place to put it, actually. Uh, and that we will be adding instead. And in, so number one, I think is going to, the other thing we've talked about adding to that is 
maybe something along the lines of please help us understand how your background will expand the expertise of the board. Yes. So that will be added to one. And Dr. Worley is talking about for six, uh, she's probably going to provide us back some, some different language. Are there any other questions that we want to discuss first? And then we'll go to the overall process and timeline. I, I like Dr. Means' big tent statement, but it's probably not the, the most eloquent way to put it, but I really like it. So. <laughs> Sounds like we're generally okay with the rest yeah. of the questions. Yeah. Um, let's step back then, uh, not looking at the questions and answers. Again, these will not be something people are writing to. These will be something people are speaking to when they when they come and meet uh, with the board that day. Um, are any other questions or comments about the overall process and timeline? I just, so it said, I don't know how many times I've done this. I think maybe four. And if somebody asks, would ask me, well, Mike, how do you decide? And I would say, it's been different every time, you, you know, so I can't really say there is, I have a rule of thumb. Do I look at the written materials and then pretty much have us have it ranked or do I put weight on what the people say? Or I, I just to be transparent here, it's every time has been unique with how I've reached my decision. Do you know ahead of time pretty much for certain or is it just before you write that name down in the paper that you decide in? I would say I can't tell you how it's going to go or how I cast my vote this time at all. It, it, just so people know, it's it's hard to make this choice from where we sit. Thanks. Liz, anything else from you? No, I'm ready if you want. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, one more thing. Everyone just, okay. Dr. Worley. Dr. Worley, are you ready to go? Or I, should we... I am ready okay. to, to put out, you know, a, a basic idea. And then if it, if this doesn't bother the people, I just don't feel like I'm going to get a lot from the someone estimating a degree. Um, I find that actually to a former point, relatively unscientific. Um, so um, I think that, you know, the listener might be more the one to, decide to what extent are they hearing it expressed. So one way we could do this is to say in that part, first part of that question, please share what you find important in the board's North Star and district plan, dot, dot, dot. And then the second part we could say, because I don't think it's a, I think board members, you know, do, I mean, if someone's going to be a board member, we are going up there and saying we're committed to following the board bylaws. Um, so I would, I think it would be a better use if that's something we're interested in having them talk to. I think it'd be better to ask something along the lines, have you reviewed the board bylaws and are you committed to following, or have you reviewed and are you committed to following the board bylaws, policies, and ethical standards? Um, let's stick with this specific question. Any responses to Dr. Willie's adjustments? And I know she might do some final edits to that, but... I think like it's a good improvement. Okay. Dr. Worley, I would ask that you kind of tighten that up, tighten that up to the to the degree that you can this evening and send them off to uh, Julia, who will insert them into this document. Um, are is the board comfortable with that? Is the yeah. kind of we have general agreement and she will just do some edits without changing the intent. Mm -hmm. Okay. If 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 Dr. Worley is happy with it, I'm Happy with it? Dr. Worley, are you comfortable with that? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Mr. Mark. Uh, with regards to when the appointee would have to stand for election, can we make that very abundantly clear in the beginning of the materials we send out? So, because I know we have answered that question. I think Dr. Jessup, you were in that spot where you had to run in the spring and then run again a year later. And I don't know, I think that's the case now. I, yeah, I, it is. I'd look at, so if 
that we don't have to spend time that evening explaining that to these people. It's been, that's so we make it really clear in the, in the written materials that that's the deal here. Okay. So again, uh, the key thing with this is the individuals will be responding to this call for applicants. They'll have a window of time to do that. They will submit. We will, the board will then get the, that material sent to us as a packet. We'll review it all as a packet, have about a week to do that. And then um, applicants will be um, given the opportunity to come before us speak to each of the different questions that we've been working on this evening. And then the board will take a public vote to determine which applicant we will seat. <laughs> My big memory from that that I was not prepared for is that once they are voted onto the board by the board for the rest of this term, they literally come up here and are on the page. Um, yes. So I, I remember vividly the, oh, I thought I would get, <laughs> I thought I would get a moment uh, and that moment was fleeting. Um, Dr. Boyd. Just one clarification, because I, I do think we had this question last time we did this, which was, what if you can't make it to that meeting? Um, do we need them to come, like, to be able to come in, in some form or fashion? Does it have to be in person? So if a person were, like, let's say on vacation, and they really wanted to be on the board, could they come virtually on the 26th? Could clarify my question. I don't, my, my initial response is, I don't have a substantial concern. It, it may, it may, it may be detrimental to not be in the room in person, but I don't know. I'm kind of hard nosed about that. This job, means you have to show up. No, but if, Even, if people have a vacation and we're giving them, you know, like... I respect your like opinion. This. I just have in my opinion, too, that, you know, if... Yeah. Ms. Hummerall? Yeah, I would agree with Jenny that if somebody had to appear virtually, um, we would allow that. Any other board members have a perspective on this one way or the other? Your policy states that board members can participate virtually. And so if you are a candidate to be on the board, then having that virtual opportunity seems to be in alignment with your policy. It's the only thing I would add. You're looking in here to see if we say anything about them needing to actually come in person. When this was last done, I don't know if that was on our radar at all. No, was it? I think there may, we may have lost a candidate or two because they were unable to be here in person the yeah. last time. I do feel like I think that's really important. Um, sorry, because I think the timing, I mean, if we were looking, I mean, always there's going to be a possibility of vacation, but we're looking at a, a, a week there where I think there might be either a high occurrence of that or you might have um, people who have other commitments, for example, um, that is a very common college drop-off week, for example. Um, okay. So, I, I mean, I just think given if we want to get it done by that time, then I would um, be in favor of, that does not mean that people who are voting have to receive things in the same way. If they have a strong feeling um, about it, um, that's, you know, that's their prerogative. But I think that, you know, yes, we do allow this virtually um, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, and if this person is clear that, that, the, that they already had something they've scheduled or committed to, but they can make the point of being there virtually, I would be comfortable with hearing that from them virtually. Dr. Means, I'm sure you can figure it out, but if we're going to have virtual, a mixed session, that lottery number, as they walk in, there has to be a 
It can be figured out. I'm sure Jamie can figure it out. A we'll, way to, we'll figure out the process. Right, right. Just yeah. so if we well prepared for that, that yes. then uh, there's got to be a way to do it. So okay. no, we can make yeah. I was just thinking it's in between the mom groups with when they have the marketplace. A lot of people that want stuff. My wife does it frequently. There's other than that, or something on the line that it's like a random draw. Sure. A random number, number generator. Yes. Yeah. Those <laughs> number of things on the on the screen. It's like wheel of fortune. Yep. So what we've got is, I think we've got the, the, where where I'm hearing folks as a group land is that we will allow virtual virtual participation. Um. That we've got the email that will go out. We'll, we'll include the encouraging applicants from all backgrounds, professions, and trades to apply. Mm -hmm. um, the adjustment to uh, the question number one that we articulated on the back end. Uh, adjust, we'll need to adjust this to note that this seat will be up for, that it will fulfill the rest of this year's term. It will be on the ballot in April for a one-year term. And then on the ballot of pre next year for a three year term. Um, yeah. And so that's. I did not realize that that was actually how. Yeah. So definitely. And, and that. that's, that's normal. Yeah. Like people have asked, is that normal? Yes. That's the. You did Mr. Meyer for, yeah. Like that's the situation I was in that I okay. applied, was brought onto the board, hmm. had, I don't know, seven months, eight months. I forgot. It wasn't long. Um, and then had an election, and then and I think it was maybe an off year election. I mean, I think it was the only person on the ballot. Um, so we'll do that, and then we'll figure out the lottery number, folks. Uh, if anybody here is, is here virtually, we also want to make sure we ask: Is anybody here going to be virtually when we're mm -hmm. figuring that out to make sure we've got the technology set? Sure. On that, all backgrounds, trades, and careers part, I I want. I would like to be sure we have language that does not discourage someone who's a stay-at-home parent and not working from applying. And I don't want to exclude, I think, to Lois Weber, who served on the board for 30 years. And um, children were her career. And that was all she did. And she did it with all of her life. And so there will be people like that out there that you do not need to have a college degree. You do not need to have a license in something. You do know, you know what I'm saying, that, that that's a, an honorable path necessary in the, our world that some people choose. And I would like to be sure we're welcoming to those applicants as well. And just, just for clarification, Dr. Spanger, this doesn't deviate from the the normal path of somebody coming in to come into the election cycle when when we have this. So there's nothing material or directionally that changes between what we're doing here to fill a vacancy versus when the when it's election time. Oh, do you mean do they need to be qualified electors? Yeah. Ah, are we clear on that? At that point, that asking for yeah. clarification. Mm. In terms of like they must be a resident of Wauwatosa, that they could run. Like you, you have to be a U.S. citizen. Well, maybe I, you don't. I I don't think that's the role of the board to determine if they're going to actually be a candidate. No, for the election. But they they need to be eligible to be a candidate. Why? I don't know. I'm just, we're just asking, yeah, right? I, I don't, I don't know why they should be either. You know, but like you fill a space, and then I mean, you're not a candidate, and you just. Okay. I suppose you could fill. I mean, the do they have more? You have yeah. the right to select your the replacement. If that person chooses to then seek election, that's their decision. No, I don't mean that they have to seek election. Next are, time, but I know are that, they eligible? That they would be so that, that they the, the fundamental eligibility. You, you know, like like the, the U.S. president has to be a certain age. Yes. Well, you wouldn't appoint somebody to fill out a term if they were 18 years old. Maybe you, maybe that yeah. goes, maybe we're making the assumption that people would assume that yeah. that is an expectation. But yes, you have to be a resident of Wauwatosa. You have to meet the legal requirements. The legal requirements. Requirement. That was be the yes. legal requirement. And that we not have an oh-no moment where we pick somebody and then we find out that they 
like some they haven't lived here long enough or I, I don't I don't know what I don't know what I'm just hearing I'm gonna ask Ms. If, yeah. if we have agreement on this is the process yeah. I will ask Mr. Waterman yes. to place in the first two two lines two paragraphs something that makes that very clear yes okay that that I don't believe. a legal statement yes so that we that don't you pick some legal requirements right and yes. then find that, out that, that's, uh oh they, 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 well, you know what? Yeah. So, okay. Vacancy of notice interest oh, by an elector. I blank qualified elector of the Wallace Coastal School Church to hereby announce my intention to be a candidate. So we need to define what is a qualified elector. So I'll ask Mr. Waterman to speak to them on the front end. Okay. We do ask them to stipulate okay. that they are a qualified elector. And then they're going to ask, what, what does that mean? Okay. So let's answer it for him right away. Yeah. And then we also will have, we also then also include all of that because for everything that we send out is our policy and bylaws and membership, which does include all of that information in of who's qualified to be on the board within that. So the packet of information will include that. And that, sorry. Um, so we've got a little bit, a couple things to, to tweak and adjust, and I think we've got a, a pathway forward for that. Uh, Dr. Worley, are you in a place that you can read this motion? Wait, well, I am. Here. Would you like it to read, however, something along the lines of approve the the um, procedures as uh, discussed or updated or amended? We didn't really amend them officially, so maybe updated. I think as as dis would folks be comfortable with as discussed. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, it is recommend. Go ahead. One more nuts and bolts thing. So we have the presentations. Let's say we choose somebody who is making a Zoom appearance. Because they're not in the room, and we can do this, we need to be able to credential them to get into the meeting with. Somehow, I, mean, I know Jamie could figure it out for really. We we'll probably have to take a break or, or find and then right. give that person the credentials to be a panelist. Right. And I don't know because they have to have an email. I, I mean, or maybe we have some exceptions for, I mean, Jamie would have a way to let them into the meeting as a panelist without a school district email address. I think we publish it wrong. Right. But just so we're all ready to go. Yeah. So we, we, we doc, uh, Mr. Meyer, we do that with other speakers oh. for board oh. meetings. All right. I, I know you can, just so that we're all ready to go if that scenario comes to pass. Okay. Thanks. What's important is they need to identify themselves ahead of time, just like we don't like just jump into a meeting ourselves. Right. 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 In, in a Zoom and not say something ahead of time. So that means that process needs to be clear in what we're sending out. However, about it is. If they, yeah. yeah so how, we, how they would, how, yeah. who they need to let know that they're coming virtually, not in person. Dr. Worley, I think you're... Okay. It is recommended that the school board approve the procedures as discussed for filling school board vacancies and I so move. Thank you, ma'am. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Any board discussion on this item? Ms. Summers, please call the roll. Mr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Hoyk? Yes. Dr. Worley? Yes. Ms. Hammer Rowland? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. And that motion passes. Um, I will work with Dr. Means and Ms. Summers to uh, get that cleaned up and get everything out um, tomorrow or the next day. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. You may have a second. Second. Thank you. Please call the ring. Mr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Hoy? Yes. Dr. Worley? Yes. Ms. Hammer Rowland? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup? Yes. We are adjourned at 719. Thank you all very much. Have a good night.